humankind game, like other historical forex strategy games like Civilization VI, can be a bit of a complex beast from time to time. Lots of moving parts, and some, like this one, very, very powerful and often not understood. In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the most fundamental tips and tricks for humankind, but also someone that you just probably have never heard of before. Indeed, during my live streams, it's some of these tips that constantly pull people up, and I'm always hearing about things that surprise people. So sit back and relax, and let's jump straight in. First up, this Civic. This undeniably powerful Civic, Foreign Customs. Take a look. On its left, you have cultural respect, which doubles, plus 100% fame earned from aesthete stars, and on the right, through cultural eradication, you can prevent your empire from going into a rebellion thanks to the influence of others. More on that later in the video, but first I want to focus on that plus 100% fame. If you are not rocking this civic, you are selling yourself short, and here's why. Take a look at the numbers. And it's useful to just really have a, a base understanding. So in this case, which was a normal game on a giant map, early eras, I'm earning just shy of 100 fame, as you can see, for a base star. A second tier star provides 200, and then 300 for the gold tier, the exception being, of course, my special star, which is the expansionist one already completed up the top there. Now, why does this matter? And why should you always choose cultural respect on foreign customs? Because those base values will be doubled. And I'll show you the power of that a little bit later in the video. But first, I think it's really important that we talk about why. How do you achieve this? So you're going to need to go to your society screen to unlock the civic. And I'm going to use Babylon here as an example. You can see my societal influence spreading across my territories, marked in green. That's the color of my empire. Influence is spread largely through that purple metric in the top hand right of your screen, influence. We'll talk a bit about some tips and tricks for generating more of it later in the video. But for now, what you need to understand is, in a nutshell, the more influence that's being generated in territories, by different cultures, the greater power they have to take influence over your territories. Here you can see it playing out in practice. I am 97% influential over the capital city of Babylon. Why? Because my influence generation and a variety of other factors, again, that I'll cover in greater detail soon, like trade routes and religion, means that I'm influential over them and their cities. That's annoying, of course, because it changes their civics, but what it will do back to my fame screen here is something else. Capture a city that is under your influence, like I could do to Babylon, like I've already actually done, and you'll be able to enact the civic. Here's what it does in practice. Take a look at the numbers. You can see down the bottom middle of the screen here, the aesthete stars. Their fame value has been doubled. Compare it to this scientist star above, and you can see the civic in effect. A one star tier, as I move from bronze to silver, will net me 176 fame in this case, with the exception of my expansionist star because I'm an expansionist culture. The aesthete star, though, is doubled. 350 fame from that star. Think about the impact that that has over the course of a game. Your aesthete influence and the fame generated from it is doubled, even at this low level. Right? The bronze to silver transition is worth as much fame as a golden star in any other category. And of course, this will snowball over time. This is really nuts. And if you can grab the civic, again, like I say, by taking a city like I did with this one here, don't forget you can hover over any city at any time to figure out how much influence it's generating as well. I just wanted to quickly highlight that on the main plaza here. But the crucial thing to note is that this city was once a barbarian city. You can see it noticing its distinct lack of districts and the fact that I'm just placing my Egyptian pyramid. Now, you might think that's a bad thing. I've got two things to cover on it. One, a surprise tip later in the video. But firstly, I just want to note that these cities can be taken relatively easily. So if you're watching this video and thinking, well, Jumbo, look, your tip's all fine and good. And as much as I would love to get double, double aesthetic fame, fame, jeepers, for the rest of the game, I can't take a city that's under my influence. Yes, you can. And those independent cities, like that one I was just showing you, are the key to it. Not Thebes, not Memphis, these ones. You can take them very easily. When they spawn, in fact, you can take them for free if there's not a single population in it. 
if they are under your influence, which they should be because they are easier to influence than other AI opponents, you can really quickly grab them and unlock this Civic. Although like you saw earlier in the video, it's entirely possible for me to do it with Babylon. But there is one more strength and it's this, a culture's heritage. The cultural blessing Civic. I hate to bombard you with Civics and I'll be moving on from them soon, but this one really matters. Let's jump in and take a look why. It matters especially because it combos well with our first tip and really helps to pull this strategy, this influence generating empire city building strategy in humankind into one. And it's through this on the right, multiculturalism plus 10 influence on main plazas if assimilated peoples or on administrative centers of assimilated peoples. Now, what that doesn't actually specify, but what I am happy to confirm it does do, or at least in my experience it does, is provide plus 10 influence on captured ones as well. You don't just have to assimilate them into your empire to make the most of them, you can capture the cities. So it's kind of a two for one deal. You get it under your influence, like I did with the city of Was down the bottom there of my screen. You take it over and then you unlock two civics. The first one doubles your aesthetic fame and the second one ensures that every city that you capture generates you an extra 10 influence per turn from the barbarian tribes. But, and transitioning nicely through into my next one, take a look here at philosophy with its plus one city cap. I just want to quickly note here as a bonus tip, and while we're talking about ways to generate influence, cities are ways to do it. Take a look at my city cap. You'll notice that I'm four out of three, and I would always recommend that you run one ahead. If you're struggling, look to your tech tree to find more, or potentially some cultures like Persia. It's important to note that the city cap penalty is only, as you can see, minus 10 influence for being one over the cap. It makes it almost always an incredible decision to be plus one over. The influence gain that you generate from it actually outweighs the downside. Take a look here, Luluban, the capital itself, producing over 30 influence on its one tile, the center of my new city providing over 20, even Thebes over here, which is garbage, is providing me with 20 influence. And if I'm only losing 10 per turn, why would I not run one above my city cap at all times? It's another little way to generate influence. I want to talk a bit more about some other strategies to generate influence, as I touched on at the start of the video, while you watch me capture this city. Because of course, capturing the cities is an important part of the strategy. You want to make sure you at least capture a few barbarian ones, those neutral tribes. They're the easiest way to make it work. And actually, in general, I have to say they're the easiest way to grab cheap, free and easy cities in the early game. The yields, as I've already demonstrated, are absolutely profound and make it worthwhile to ride one above that city cap. As you're taking the cities, make sure you rearrange your units like I'm doing here. Range units at the back, battering rams or melee shields at the front. Take your time, strike away at them. You'll see a bad round followed by a very good one. And you'll also note how the AI fights. A bonus tip here to the battering rams, which can destroy the fences and allow mounted units to take these cities as well. And of course, if you're really struggling, you can take them peacefully and assimilate them with money or gold. A few extra tips here at the end of the video, my lightning fast tips to those of you who stuck around. If you did, you are the real MVP. Why don't you comment something like MVP in the comments below and we'll just see if anybody actually does it. Either way, other tips to generate influence on your territories, if you don't want to take them by force, include, of course, ensuring your stability is full. If you are at the 90% to 100% stability mark in a city, you'll generate two influence on it per turn. That's on the territory, mind you. If you drop below the 90% threshold, you'll only generate one influence per turn from your population, below 30% and you'll be in mutiny. So. Make sure that you keep your stability high to generate as much influence as possible. Other ways to do it, of course, include your religion. Don't sleep on your religion. Those religious tenets can be powerful, whether they're improving your stability or providing influence. The other way, of course, is to look at cultures. A couple that stand out in particular are the Persians in the classical era. Their extra influence and Siri and city cap make them a great choice to fuel future expansion. And of course, last but not least, don't forget, there are many other ways to generate influence. These are just a few in this video, 
But I would also, of course, incredibly encourage you to be trading and building up some allies. If you're fighting people and taking some cities, make sure you have some friends as well, because trade will be very useful for securing luxuries to keep your stability and, by extinction, influence very high. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.